Here we go. Uh, first person that would want to speak would be Craig Stevens. Not here. Okay. All right. Howard Hannum. And this would be for questions only to Williams and EP. And then one follow up. Go ahead. Is that on, Howard? Check one, two. Okay. H A N N U M. That's Howard. Okay. Yes. We, uh, we we were told at the new Milford open house by Matt Swift, project manager of Constitution, the site will be for four engines, Caterpillar engines. In Franklin, New York, at the open house, we were told by Matt Swift five. Caterpillar engines. Both times Charlie Brown, the FERC rep on hand, concurred with the answers. What is the accurate number? Thank you. I, uh, I'll be honest, I'm not. Uh, oh. um, um, we're not real familiar with everything to do with Constitution. We're definitely here to answer any questions around the central compressor station. Um, so, I don't know if, if, is that a question about what's at this site? How many engines are you permitting for on this site? This, uh, this site. This, uh, excuse me. This application has, uh, three engines and one turbine in it. Oh. We also have a 3516B, which will be used as an emergency generator backup. So that'll be four, four engines or three? There'll be three engines to compress the gas and one as an emergency backup generator and one turbine. Follow up? Okay. Uh, can I pronounce this name? Mark Schmellering? Mark, you signed up previously? Send an email? You want to come up? Mark? Okay. Mark, are you Mark? Hey, Mark. Schmellering? Okay, come on up, Mark. Right up to the podium. Right up to the... Microphone. We have a question and then a follow up. No signs, Mark. So you want to put the sign down? No photographs. No photographs. It's no photographs, Mark. Okay? You can submit it later. Thanks. You can submit it later. It's very hard to submit something like this. You could submit it later, Mark. These are the ground rules. Everyone's following the ground rules. That includes you. If you're not going to follow the ground rules, I'm going to ask you to sit down and leave. You've got to put the photo down, Mark. Okay? You can submit it later afterwards. I'm, I'm not going to let you move these, on. These folks won't see the photo. I'm, I'm not going to let you move on until you put the these photo down. These folks won't see the photograph and, of Mark, Pam Judy who got poisoned by a And you've been asked to put the photo down, and, you, and that's the rules. Station, Everyone's like following the rules. I'm not going to let you continue. Put the photo down. You can submit it at the end for hearing, okay? I think everyone got a look at it. You can put the photo down now and ask your question, please. You Thank said, you very much. You said much. no signs. Okay, Mark Vera, you're, you're out of line, so you can go on over there, okay? Go ahead, Mark, ask your question. I, I don't have a question. Uh, oh, well, then if you want to offer uh, testimony, that's in the second part of the meeting. Okay. You have a testimony, you can offer, okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sign gets put away, Mark. That's the rules. Those are the rules. Okay, next person we have who's uh, signed up previously is Matt Walker. If you have a question, Matt. Hi. Will William sign on to EPA's Natural Gas Star program and be a, an official partner? Can you repeat that one more time? Repeat that. Would William sign on to be part of EPA's Natural Gas Star program and, and become an official partner of that program? It's a program that uh, put, plays out some of the best available technologies um, and asks company to volunteer, to voluntarily sign on to, to be part of that program. We've evaluated the program, and a lot of our practices are very consistent with the program, but right now we're not, we're not going to apply for it. No. And my follow-up question is why? If you're already using the technologies, why not become an official partner? Due to the additional time and effort and cost associated with uh, participating in the program, we've just decided not to participate in it at this time. Okay, thank you. Okay, I know the, the people that signed up tonight, and if your name's not on the list, that's okay, because when I go get through this list, I'll ask you to come up and ask a question, and then we'll go back around. Uh, Kathy McNulty, you want to come up and ask a question? 
Okay, you can wait, absolutely. Albert from Sandy, New York. And Albert, your last name is spelled C-R-U-D? C-R-U-D-O. D-O? Okay. Go ahead. My question is, is there any chance that this application is going to be denied? Mark? Certainly, we have an issue that yet. We're looking into the comments right now. And those comments hold weight? Certainly. We'll have a comment and response document addressing everyone. Thank you. Uh, Vera Scroggins. I'd like to know what pipelines are going into the central compressor station, the Williams Central Station. Is it just what you pointed out on the map, or is it also the Constitution pipeline? Will that be hooked into the compressor station? What pipelines are they? Definitely initially we've got a handful of pipelines that come from the wells on the gathering side. Um, the uh, discharge line initially will be as demonstrated there on on the map. Um, I understand there is an application out for the Constitution pipeline. Um, should that be approved, um, there is a uh, likelihood that it would be an additional takeaway from this facility. Okay, before we move on, sir, in the back, there's no signs allowed in the auditorium, so you want to take the sign outside into the hallway. That's the rule. Of the hearing out in the hallway. Thank you. That's fine. You can go out in the hallway. No signs are allowed in the auditorium. I think you know that from our last meeting. Okay. Uh, Christopher Acker. Acker, Bridgewater Township. Come on, sorry, Chris. Go ahead. Ask a question. Could you tell us where the compressor station is located in relationship to population center? I'm not sort of know where it is, but not quite sure. The location he, he has is uh, Brooklyn and Bridgewater Townships, straddling both. Go ahead. It's approximately three to four miles southeast of Montrose. It's uh, not close to any large population source. Okay. Any follow-up questions, sir? Are you sure? Okay. Uh, David Plank from Franklin Township. David? pointed out that the gathering line would be connected by this compressor to the Springville line. Is that correct? Via a line that we call the central line. Yeah. And the central line is what is only going to Springville. Is that the case? And the, the central line that runs south out of this location um, travels down to Springville Township where it connects to the Springville line. At that point, the gas can either be delivered uh, through Springville to Transco, or at that point, there's an interconnect with the Tennessee um, 300 line. Yeah. Okay, so one follow up. Yes. Okay, that, well, that was your one follow up. Okay. This is a clarification. Okay, go ahead. I'll let you ask this last one. Is this bi directional capability in this compressor station? It's not necessarily bi directional um, because you've got uh, the, on the suction side of the station, you've got pipelines coming in from the field, from the wells. And so you'll have a suction side of the station from the field, from the wells, that will then be uh, compressed and deep dehydrated, and then on the discharge side, it will go uh, south on the central line toward toward the Springville line. That's only south, is that correct? That will definitely be the only takeaway initially. Um, wow. if, 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 other, initially. if other folks um, uh, have projects that come pick gas up on the discharge side of that, then we would definitely entertain that because more takeaways are advantageous. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. you can ask when I, when I go around. Dr. Reverend Ellen Sokolow? Sokolow? Um, this is for the DEP reps. Sure. 
I'd like to know what the results are or where I can find the results of your public health impacts, your environmental impact studies, your noise level studies, your methodology for air quality monitoring, your economic, economic impact studies, and what are you doing to concretely protect your employees who are mandated by their job from issuing violations to the gas and oil industries? I know that's well, we're here to talk about the central compressor station. Okay. This is this specifically related to that. Wait, I can give you some contact information after after this meeting portion. Have those things been done? We did some short-term studies up in Susquehanna County, Bradford County, and, and Washington County down in the Pittsburgh area. We are doing a long-term health study down in the Washington area now that started in July, and I think it's gonna go until next July. We are putting in some VOC monitors in Wyoming and Susquehanna County starting in around January for one year or more each location to do some studying. Um, so that's some of the stuff that's going on now. I can get you the results of the studies that have taken place here in Susquehanna, Bradford, and, and down in the Pittsburgh area. Or I can at least give you information you know, on the, to our website to get that. Okay. We also have our air quality monitoring stations, Wilkesburg and Scranton, and other locations in the valley where you can get online and see continuous data that's updated hourly, so you can see hour by hour all the data for NOx, SO2, volatile organic compounds, particulate, ozone. Um, so I can give you some of the information later. Noise, we don't regulate noise, so that's something that the DEP doesn't really get involved in. That's more of our local municipality ordinance mm -hmm. type stuff. Economic thing? impact, we don't Yeah, involved. economic, we don't get involved in that unless it's if it's, a, it's a, a major project based on emissions, then some of that gets involved. But these are all under the thresholds that don't involve some of that. The local Chamber of Commerce might be able to help you out with that. Okay, so the, the last part of that question is, are you doing something to protect your employees from repercussions from the gas and oil industry when they file? Um, we, we get... Um, we have our complaint line we investigate. Our inspectors are out at these facilities frequently. If, if they find violations, we deal with it. We're not being told not to issue violations. So um, I don't know how else to answer that. We, you know, we have you know, ethics and, and things like that. We're, we're professionals. If there's a violation, they're going to address it. There's a chain of command. There's paperwork that's filled out on the site. Um, obviously, a lot of people have been doing uh, file reviews, right to no request, and, and all that's public information that they can see and find and look into. So um, we're not being told not to issue violations. Okay. If we find them, NLVs will be issued. So I have like six follow-up questions. Okay, yeah. just when you're right. Um, well, you asked your one more follow-up question, then I'm going to have to just sit down because I've got more people I have to. The, uh, the first follow-up question is, in the places that you have been doing monitoring and impact studies of the whole range, how close are these to existing compressor stations? Well, when we did the Susquehanna uh, study a couple of years ago, they were right at the sites of the drilling and the compressor stations. But like I said, that was short term. That was uh, several weeks. I, I forget exactly. I mean, it might have been six weeks or so or less. But that was right at the site. We don't have nothing right now that's continuously monitoring. The closest is Scranton and the Wilkes-Barre area. They're certainly looking into it. Like I said, the VLC monitors is, is the next step. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Terry Black. Is Terry here? No? Okay. All right. Uh, is there anyone in the audience, before I go around a second time, that uh, did not sign up and would like to come up and speak? Okay. And again, I forgot to remind you, but if you come up to the podium and just say, say your name for the stenographer. And I just want to remind people, please don't talk over people when they're speaking. Thank you. Can I, can I sign up to testify also? Sure, oh, well, when we, we have a break. Okay. All right. um, and this is a question for Williams. Um, at the open, uh, a statement first and a question. At the open house, Matt uh, Swift, who is a project manager for the Constitution Pipeline, did say that the William Central Station adjacent to the Newton Hill Cemetery is slated to be the beginning of the Constitution Pipeline. 
Um, and I wanted to ask you, uh, when you go to sign people up for right-of-ways, do you explain to them what a class one area is and what an HCA is? A high consequence area, and by virtue of signing up, they're in both of those categories. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, hang on, it's Rebecca Roger, correct? R-O-T-O-R. Okay. E-R. Go ahead, I'm sorry, Mike. No, I, I think when, when we talk to folks about the right of way, you know, they definitely have a lot of questions around pipeline safety, public safety, different things like that. Um, we definitely don't um, um, hide any discussion around area class locations if that helps um, to, to describe how the pipeline is designed or what we intend to put in. Um, uh, we have those discussions. I don't know for a fact if the land agents have a script that they read through that specifically addresses that, but I do know that we do want to make an effort. We do attempt either through um, landowner meetings or, or uh, right-of-way owner meetings to, to have those conversations to help them understand uh, how we're going to operate the line. Well, just could you please t tell us what an HCA is and what the uh, FERC guidelines are for Class 1? I do think that we're um, here talking about the air permit for the central air compressor station. And so you know, this discussion around um, the Constitution pipeline is um, or the not on topic. So. High consequence area is determined by a formula industry has. Okay, is that, are you have a question? Or you're, well, you can offer that for testimony. He's trying to answer your question. Okay. So you're not going to answer. He's, he's offered you an answer. Do you, do you know what an HCA is? I know what an HCA is. It's not relevant to this discussion tonight. That's your answer. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else who wants to come up? Sir? You in the back and then sir, you in the front. You could go ahead. In the back. Sir. Yeah, you first and then the gentleman. Right? I'm gonna walk around this way. No, no, no. I think I called your name. Himper? Him. You first, then him, then you, sir. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay. Okay, my name is William Houston, H U S T O N. And my question, I didn't come with a prepared question, but one arose from what I heard today. So given that um, earlier question, the response was that you had done kind of like some minimal studies. She gave a litany of studies, uh, economic study, you know, long-term, uh, you know, associate economic studies. Apparently, there were some small studies that had been done. They didn't sound like they were comprehensive. And um, also, that there were some studies in progress. So given that, and given that there seems to be a lot of anecdotal evidence of serious long-term environmental consequences uh, due to these compressor stations, and also health consequences. So my question is, is it prudent to move forward with this process? This, is, this question is really for DEP. Is it prudent to move forward with this process, given that we don't have a complete existing studies in place and lots of anecdotal evidence that there are a lot of harmful consequences? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, all I can say is on the, the short-term studies, they found no evidence of any uh, health effects that would be imminent in the area. We're verifying long-term just you know, to be certain with, with, you know, the public request. We look at every station separately. There's regulations that apply, best available technology. Uh, the facilities meet some of these requirements. You know, we, we handle it that way. Um, the two uh, existing problems that I would say there is lots of anecdotal and maybe even some scientific studies about, number one is forest. Okay, uh, is there any question in there? No, yes. Not for test study. Okay. Well, it's just, it's just a follow-up. I don't feel like I got a complete, a complete answer. Um, I point to um, a health study that was recently came out of Texas that showed that cancer rates were down except for one place, and it was the place where the compressor stations are, I believe, it was the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Right. I, I think the gas is a little different, from, or a lot different from what you're seeing in Texas compared to up here in the Northeast, a lot drier gas. But we have air toxic uh, people, toxicologists in Harrisburg that review a lot of this data and the emissions, and uh, so far they don't see any indication that there's any health concern. Okay, sir, you're welcome. Just sure. say it's like your name. Uh, Snyder. Artist. Leland Snyder, L-E-L-A-N-D-S-N-Y-D-E-R. Thank you. 
Thank you. Okay. okay, my question is basically, and it directly relates to the compressor station. We know that the fracking fluid contains toluene, benzene, diesel fuel. All these have very low vapor pressures. Where, what is the life cycle of these? Exactly where are they exiting the system? Are they exiting at the condenser tank, saline tank, at the actual drill site, or is there a second conditioning at the compressor? You're and about the fracking fluid from the well pad. Let that answer yes, that and first. also. Well, let me answer the first part first. So well, no, the, I don't. I want to follow up, but okay. I want to have them make a statement if they're qualified to answer this question, and are they representative of the company? Not your follow-up. Okay. No, it's not. Yeah, those are two questions. Oh, well, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can the shut up. Go ahead. Can you repeat the first question again? Toluene, benzene, diesel fuel, all low vapor pressure. They're going in with the fracking fluids. What's the life cycle of these? Where are they exiting the system? Are they exiting at the well pad somewhere? Or are they exiting in the conditioning unit at the compressor? And are you qualified to answer this question? Uh, as far as the air permit goes, we take gas samples of the gas that comes into our compressor station on an annual basis, and we analyze that through an extended gas analysis to determine the components of BTEX and other constituents, and we find very, very little uh, of those components within our gas stream. In fact, uh, I haven't seen any benzene within our gas samples taken to date. Where does it exit? I can, can't tell you what happens upstream of our compressor stations at the well pad. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, second is, if I was, let's say, 10 feet, let's say, uh, who knows, uh, 500 feet away from the compressor station downwind, if I did a standard test, air test, for formaldehyde, exactly what concentration do you think I'd find in the air? And there are standard tests available to do this, usually available to farmers. I'm not aware of any testing that has been done 500 feet down we went from many compressor stations, but uh, it's a minor source permit, and when you get into major source permit, you did do ambient air quality studies and modeling. Um, since it's a minor source, I would think there would probably be very little formaldehyde, EOCs, or any constituents in the air. Right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, right here in the way. My name is Eugene Marner, M-A-R-N-E-R. Um, to confirm what Rebecca Roeder said earlier, uh, Matt Swift, the, um, the program director for the Constitution Pipeline, told me at the open house in Franklin that this compressor station was the beginning of the Constitution Pipeline. If so, why isn't this compressor station part of the Constitution Pipeline proposal? The central pipeline, that, or the central compressor station that the application is for um, is a compressor station that uh, has merits with or without the Constitution pipeline. It has been planned um, before the Constitution pipeline. If the Constitution pipeline never gets built, it'll be utilized um, uh, for, um, uh, for moving gas from Susquehanna County uh, south to the Transco pipeline and to the Tennessee gas pipeline. Um, there are additional markets in New York to the north um, that um, I understand the folks from Constitution would like to be able to take gas from this point to the north. And so um, I'm not 100% clear on all the details of their application, but uh, I do understand they're wanting to um, pick up gas from the discharge side of this compressor station. You say the folks from Constitution. Aren't you the folks from Constitution? You're Williams. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. you're interrupting. Yeah. yeah, just 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 to clarify, there there are a couple of different business units within Williams. We're part of the uh, Williams Midstream, which focuses on gathering and processing infrastructure. And so uh, the business that we focus on is gathering gas from the field and transporting it to transmission lines. Um, the Williams Gas Pipeline Group 
um, that does transmission pipelines across the country um, are uh, looking at a Constitution pipeline to move gas out of this area and in, into New York. Um, as it sounds like most folks in this room are aware that that's under an application. We don't have a lot of familiarity with what's going on with that project. I see you don't speak to each other. That's interesting. That's interesting. Okay. Um, is there anyone else that, that did not get a chance to speak? Sir, did you speak? No. Okay. I think I called your name, though. All right. Okay. Go ahead. The state's put your name for the... Now, I'm going to just want to point out... Aqua. Hang on one second. Okay. I just want to point out at 647, we're going to move this along so we can start the, the testimony part of the hearing. So go ahead. Why don't you just do a health impact? That's the problem. If you don't do no health impact, they shouldn't be giving out any permits. Is that a question? What's your question? Right? And that's to you guys. You shouldn't be giving out permits then. What is your question, sir? Is your question, why don't we do a health impact? If you didn't impact? do a health impact, then you should We're going to answer that. Then why right. We're going to answer the question, sir. Minor so sources are required by law to do health impacts. We go by our monitoring stations. We go by best available technology individual sources, not just compressor stations, <coughs> hundreds of permits that we issue in this region, not just compressor stations, but there's a lot of other plant pools that are issued for a vast majority of industry and none of them do health impacts based on the emissions. If they're a major source, then you get into that. If they're a major emission, emitter of hazardous air pollutants or if there's federal standards that require it, then we, we get into that. These require federal standards, but you know, the hazardous air pollutants are at a level that don't require anything to that degree. One more question. Question. That's because you guys are immune. Question, sir. Do you have a question? <coughs> Go ahead, Mark. Mark, repeat the last part of it. Yeah. Right. No, no, there's federal regulations that compressor stations, other industry have to meet. Our state standards don't apply. We, we go by federal standards when it comes to air toxics, and there's uh, certain thresholds that they have to go over to be major, and then once they're over major, then there's something we look into. Compressor stations have minimal amounts of air toxics. Okay, well, hang on. Ma'am, if you have a question, you can come up. You're reading into his time. Do you have another question? So then you don't make any help impact. Okay, it's a question, sir. It's got to be a question. Okay. Ma'am, do you have a question? You want yeah. to well, come on up to the microphone, and then, ma'am, you'll be next, okay? Come up to the microphone. Say your name. Just so we get people on record. Hi, Lodz Marsh, M-A-R-S-H. Um, you said a federal guideline that the limit has not been reached on this compressor station at this point to make it a federal require federal guidelines for pollution. Become a major for hazardous air pollution. Right? Okay. They're going to add to this compressor station up to five. Will that change that status? Certainly. We look at the cumulative total emissions from the facility. Yes, yeah, so we will, if they reapply and add a couple engines, then we'll look at the total emissions of all the engines. So for every additional station they add, there's another evaluation? Correct. Thank you. Ma'am, down here, you want to come up and ask a question? Just say and state your name for the stenographer. First, my name is Carol Marner, C A R O L E M A R N E R. Uh, from what I've heard from many, many residents in this area, there does not seem to be a good system for immediate response to complaints about noise, smells, and traffic. Will there be in place before any work begins? on this compressor station, um, a duly constituted uh, uh, method of immediate response to complaints of this nature, no matter what time of day or night. Is there anything that the DUP is planning to do that? I right. Right. Yes, we have our emergency response program at the, at the state. Our normal inspectors, you know, come out to complaints. Immediately? It depends on the severity. Because if there's a smell. Yeah, if it's, let me answer the question. Okay. Sorry. It depends on the severity, health concern, things like that. If someone calls complaining that there's dust, we try to get somebody out there, obviously, as soon as possible. But it, it's, you know, it's I've heard that this yet. rarely, rarely happens. Okay, ever. question? Question? Yeah. Well, that is what I'm wondering. Well, are they going to put something in place, people on duty 24 hours a day, to respond to this kind of complaint with proper instrumentation to measure? fumes and smells and noise. If we find a persistent problem, then there's something we look into where we do bring out inspectors 
24 hours over a period of time. But if there's no issue or, or persistent problem, then no, we'll come out with our guidelines that we have in place now. Williams, you want to answer anything from Williams? Can you add to that at all? You know, we definitely do a lot of work with the first responders in the area to make sure that they understand the risks that are um, uh, around the facility. We do develop emergency response plans to deal with um, how do we respond and behave and coordinate with first responders in the event of an emergency. Uh, beyond that, uh, it, it, there is uh, just an ongoing effort to um, uh, maintain communication and open dialogue with the community. Um, we have um, you know, office numbers, we have contact personnel that folks can call, um, and, and we uh, do endeavor, um, you know, similar to, to the DDP, depending on the severity of the issue, um, you know, we'll have an immediate response. Or, or at least in a short term, uh, mm -hmm. uh, endeavor to make a response, uh, provided we know about it. Well, I haven't heard of it yet. I hope you do. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Uh, anyone else want to? Ma'am, go ahead. Stay up and say anything. Spell your name. Uh, yeah, I have two questions. Iris Marie. Okay. okay. Iris Marie Blue, B L O O M. And I had two questions. One is about greenhouse gas emissions, and the question is to DEP. Um, why hasn't DEP done its own analysis of greenhouse gas emissions? Williams has done an analysis and DEP has put that forward as an adequate statement. Uh, so is DEP going to do its own analysis and if, if not, why not? Well, we do verify the emissions that they submit in the application. Greenhouse gas emissions have to be addressed now. So they do send us information, we verify it, and they do have to do emission Inventory statements yearly show us where all the emissions are coming from, and greenhouse gas would be one of those. You, you verify it from study? Not from, not top, just from the calculations, things like that. So you don't do your own, uh, so you don't do your own calculations? Or, or do you? It's a kind of a yes or no. Do you do your own calculations? It depends, of greenhouse it depends, gas depends on where they're coming from, where our engineers are are skilled to, to see if something looks out of line or out of place with the emission data. Okay, so you examine so their calculations. Okay, so you examine theirs. Okay, my also about greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, DEP One last question. Now we're using this along. This is about greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, DEP is using the the low figure, which is not used anymore, of twenty one that uh, for methane. Right. And methane yeah. is twenty one times as potent as carbon dioxide. Uh, we're in serious climate change right now, and methane is 105 times more potent than greenhouse than carbon dioxide as a as a greenhouse gas on the 20-year time frame, and that's the number that's being used by the IPPC. Um, even EPA uses 72 times. So why aren't you using a higher number that's more realistic, given the seriousness of the situation? Uh, well, latest. Uh meetings we have with EPA, 21 times for methane was the number that we were using. That's not okay. I'm, no, I'm saying EPA published 21 times. That's, that's okay, he's giving you an answer. He's giving you an answer, and you've had your second question. Well, we were told and, and trained to use the 21 times for conversion to you know, CO2 equivalents. So uh, if EPA changes the regulations or e the... EPA is using seven, the the low figure of 72 times well, that's for the 20 we'll year time into. frame, which is the most critical. Okay, maybe you've had your chance to. Thank you. Any, sir? Go ahead. Brett Jennings with 1T. I'm a counselor for Great Bend Borough. That's Old English spelling. Um, this is for Williams. With the incidences at uh, compressing stations in the region, mainly the one that blew up down south of here that supposedly had, uh, it was reported in the paper, you had uh, a failure of a lockout tagout system. And then the one up on Dunbar Road off the laser pipeline uh, that I haven't heard too much more of in the news. Um, how are you gonna prevent this one from blowing up too? Because those are both new stations and we don't have a foam truck like Vestal does that had to respond all the way out to Dunbar Road or down here in Springville from south, the county south of us. Uh, 
that's definitely a good question. The, 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 the question that, uh, that you point out at Dunbar, we had a lightning strike up there that, that started a little uh, a fire at that facility. You, I think your mic's off. Mic not. <clears throat> Is that better? Yep. Okay. Uh, we had a, a lightning strike at Dunbar that uh, set one of the vents uh, on fire, and uh, we had to let it uh, uh, burn out there. Um, uh, didn't have any damage, but definitely um, a little bit of a show. But uh, uh, and there was a response, um, and, and we did coordinate with the first responders there to, to, to move that away. We definitely learned a lot working with Susquehanna County uh, through the through the latest incident, um, and just uh, recently, um, uh, about a week ago, we we're, were privileged to. Uh, help. Um, uh, I can't remember exactly which fire department it was, but we're able to help purchase as a phone truck uh, here um, locally uh, in Susquehanna County. Um, that, that the intent would be it would be available uh, should we call upon. Um, probably the primary thing that we would intend to do from an emergency management coordination standpoint would be to work with the first responders uh, to make sure that we were all on the same page on what to do if there was an incident. It's never something that we want to have happen. Uh, but we definitely uh, want to make sure that uh, that's not the first time that we see each other uh, is when we're out there, so we do that coordination. Uh, beyond that, we continue to push hard to, to train our folks uh, in following proper administrative controls. We continue to work hard to make sure that we're engineering um, uh, potential problems out of the system um, and, and make, our, make sure that we're monitoring and our discipline uh, is there um, so, that, uh, so that we um, keep incidents from occurring because that's really the, the primary goal. But uh, that's, uh, uh, that, that would be the main thing. Uh, I think I've tried to hit a couple of the points there. One more question. Uh, would you require for even subcontractors that you have working on the site and the Williams personnel to have the supervisor have the OSHA 30 safety and the workers at minimum the 10 hour OSHA course? Yeah, absolutely. We've, we've, um, Require all of our contractors. We, we utilize a, a third-party site called uh, the IS Network, and all of those contractors have to submit uh, all of their um, uh, safety programs, safety procedures, all of the things that they have to uh, that they uh, are intended that they must comply with in order to be um, uh, a competent or a capable contractor. And then, you know, based on their compliance with that list of requirements. Um, you know, we get a, a green light to use them, and so, so yes, we do require um, all of that. Thank you, sir. Does anyone else want to ask a, a question that hasn't hasn't spoken yet? We're running out of time, so I'm going to try and fit in as many. And then back there. Okay. Just, Go ahead. My name's Tom Mullen, and U L L E N. I had a question for the DEP. I was wondering the chemical uh, composition of the emissions. Could you explain how it's different at all from? the airplanes overhead or maybe the vehicles people drove here tonight, is it the same stuff or something totally different? No, it's the same NOx emissions, products of incomplete combustion, so similar, yes. Did you speak yet? Okay, I'm going to let that lady go and then serve. I'll let you go. Go ahead, ma'am. Come up here. Did you have a question back there? Or sir? I'm sorry, sir. I saw you back there. Did it twice. <laughs> Frank, right? And just say and spell your name. Uh, uh, Frank Finan, F-I-N-A-N. I have a very simple question about um, being a good neighbor. If I spoke a normal voice conversation during this procedure here, I would not be a good neighbor. I'd be disturbing things. Yet, you claim that your noise, assuming the noise never hurt anybody, uh, is this going to be the same uh, disciplines as a, as a normal conversation? That's not being a good neighbor. That's kind of been quite rude. Same with the odors that can out. Uh, uh, pretending that... Okay, sir. Do you have a question? Uh, yes. Well, this is a question part. Just a question, then you can okay. offer testimony later. Um, are you, do you still think of yourself as a good neighbor if you are not being polite? The context, the context of how this applies to the natural gas compressor station. It's, it's noisy, and they claim they're going to be good neighbors. Good neighbors do not disturb your neighbors. Like, as if I was disturbing, I couldn't disturb you people by, by talking out here in normal conversation. They claim their noise is nothing more than normal conversation. You have an answer? Our aim is to be a good neighbor and work with area residents uh, when we have a compressor yeah, station. Uh, 
normal conversation is approximately 65 to 75 dBA. Uh, our compressor station requirement from the ordinance is 50 dBA, and we will meet the uh, local ordinance requirements. One more question. Can okay. okay. follow up on that? Right. So if we spoke with this what you're talking about, would you consider us polite, or would you throw us out if we spoke like that right now? <laughs> would you even try it? He would would try it. <laughs> okay, you're saying with the odors. Assuming the odors are not. Well, I had one question there. Okay. Odors. odors. Go ahead. Odors. Okay. Um, I'll make another question somehow. If I order it here, I should leave. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir? Brian, you're in. Can you spell your last name, sir? M-U-I-R-H-E-A-D. Uh, just trying to get an understanding of the, the emissions coming from the station. Uh, how would those emissions compare to, let's say, 30, 40 tractor trailers going down the highway? I don't have the comparison. But there, obviously, there's emissions from the tractor trailers, cars, lawnmowers, anything that burns the gas or... Uh, Hydrocarbon. I was just wondering if it would be a lot more than the tractor trailers, or maybe less, or is it something comparable? Well, the particulate emissions would <coughs> be higher because they use diesel fuel in trucks, and diesel, diesel is a, a dirtier bur burning fuel, where natural gas is the cleanest burning fossil fuel that we have. Um, in comparison, though, um, you know, I'd, I'd have to look at the horse, like Mark said, I'd have to look at the uh, comparisons as far as horsepower and, and, and the fuel burning, et cetera. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else who didn't get a chance to ask a question? Ma'am? Okay, I have to wrap this up soon because we're, we're cutting into our testimony time. Ma'am? Yeah. We might have time for one or two more, so I apologize if we can't get around to your second. Go ahead. Just say something. Oh, um, I'm not, I guess the, que the question would be for Wellington. Say your name, please. Oh, Susan McNamara, M-C-N-A-M-A-R-A. -A -A. Uh, my question is, what's the difference between an FRP station and a compressor station? An, an FRP station is really uh, just, uh, uh, FRP is an, an acronym that was uh, uh, selected uh, probably for convenience. It, it means a field receipt point, and uh, this was a, a term that um, uh, one of the groups that we recently um, uh, merged with, started working with, uh, you might be familiar with laser, had coined this term of a field receipt point, and um, uh, they, they can be very similar. If there is compression at a field receipt point, then it would be a compressor station field receipt point. Um, laser was using that term FRP or field receipt point to identify a place where um, <coughs> gas would come in from the field and be received into the system uh, for transportation. So conceptually it's the same thing as a compressor station. They would all be different depending on what was there. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, is this done in Sure. Yeah. I'll allow one more person after this gentleman because we do have to move. <coughs> we can offer up a testimony. 7:30. I'm sorry if I'm speaking out of order. We have almost 7:15. How is this thing working? Nobody's talking very loud here. I could barely hear you up there. I don't know if you can hear me now. Yes, we can. My sir. name is Ken Lumberg. I, I I lived here for a while. Actually, I had a place for about 18 years. My daughter is here now. Uh, I'm kind of curious. What guarantees, if any, can you guys provide that the pollution from the compressor stations will not sicken people, will not make us ill? I can tell right now that there's a difference in the past several days. My tongue and my palate tell me immediately that there's a change. Now, that's poison. And don't try to tell me it isn't, because it is. So my question is, what guarantees can you give that your pollution won't sicken us? Well, like I mentioned earlier, we have monitoring stations all across the state that monitor criteria pollutants, the NOx, the SOx, 
and there are sta federal standards that are based on health studies and our monitoring stations are looked at regularly and they're all meeting these well under the health based standards. So. Let what him answer the question. It's monitoring the air. Okay, ma'am, ma'am, you had your chance to ask the question. You could offer a testimony. He's answering this gentleman's question. I'm going to ask you to leave. If you don't, stop. He's answering the gentleman's question. If you don't like the answer, you can leave. Let him answer the question. You're only interrupting. You're not going to get any further than this. Let him answer the question. Let him answer the question. I'm going to ask you to leave, ma'am. Let him answer the question. Let All him answer the question. Stations are Ma'am, you're no only interrupting. You're not helping the situation, and you're only eating up time and putting on a nice show for these people. Let him answer the question. He's answering the question. All these compressor stations are emitting pollutants, just like our cars that we drive, just like our furnaces, everything that's cumulative, that's in the air. These monitoring stations monitor this air quality, and it shows that they're under the national ambient air quality standards. Ma'am, no, you've had your chance to ask your question. Sir, do you have another question? Go ahead. Ma'am, you've answered, the, he's answered your question, you're out of line. You're not going to get any further with me. One more question, ma'am. Oh, sir. Yes. Uh, Go ahead, sir. I apologize. I'm uh, aware of where doctors are these days, especially now. Uh, in what way, if any, are local physicians and the local hospitals prepared to deal with people who may be uh, suffering from Air pollution poisoning. I can't tell, except my tongue and my te and my palate tell me that I'm breathing something in that's completely different. So you're going to have to ask that question to the local hospitals. It would be disingenuous of us to answer that question at this point. We're not medical. In other words, it's up to the local local doctors, hospitals. Yes, I can give you a contact. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your time, ma'am. You have a question? Because you're interrupting and you're not helping the situation. Is anyone else? Very good follow up. Okay. Follow-up, go ahead. I understand that there's at least 17 compressor stations slated for our county, and there will be more. I'd like to know why we need so many compressor stations and why you even need all these pipelines, like the Constitution line, 30 inches wide to go all the way from Brooklyn to Albany, New York. Why do we need all this? Thank you. That's from Williams. Okay. I don't know that um, we necessarily came tonight prepared to speak of all the market dynamics that drive um, decisions for major infrastructure projects, but uh, you know, we definitely attempt to uh, service our customers um, they have a desire to, to uh, move gas from Susquehanna County and uh, uh, to, to different uh, markets. And so to the extent there's a demand there and, uh, and, and there's a market in New York uh, that, that wants to consume that, um, you know, we're going to do our best to provide infrastructure uh, to meet that need. Sorry, do you have a question? Uh, come up to the Matt, yeah, from, uh, from the air permit, I could tell uh, there's about 41, 42 tons per year of VOCs. Um, can you tell me what types and quantities of VOCs make up that number? Or, or an estimation of it, anyway? Majority of the VOCs are, are formaldehyde and propane that you burn in your, your grill, butane that you see in lighters. Um, there, there aren't really any heavy hydrocarbons out there. It's mainly propane, butane, and formaldehyde. The formaldehyde is a byproduct of the engine combustion. So they come from the engines as they burn the methane gas. My follow-up question is, do you know if formaldehyde causes cancer? I'll answer that. It does. It depends on the concentration. Hang on, hang on. Let me answer that, sir. Go ahead. It depends on the concentration of the formaldehyde in the air and how it is uh, received by the body. Just a, re just a request for DP to be less rude to the public. Okay, because. thank you. You can sit down now. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Any other follow-up questions that we have? Go ahead, ma'am, if you have another follow-up question, then ma'am, we'll take your follow-up. Uh, getting into the closing time now. There is a producer. Sorry. Thank you. There's a, a produced water tank 
on the site that is part of this permit application? What's in that produced water and where is it going? The produced water comes from the uh, gas stream. As gas enters the facility, uh, it was explained earlier in the process that uh, uh, water falls out in the uh, pipeline because the pipeline is cooler, so you get condensation of the produced water. And the uh, produced water uh, is routed to on-site produced water tanks. In the produced water, uh, there's a lot of brine in it, there's salt. Uh, there are some hydrocarbons that come from the interstate scrubbers within the facility, uh, primarily lube oil, and that is disposed and disposed and or recycled at uh, local facilities or uh, transported across state lines to other facilities for injection or uh, uh, recycled for reuse of fracking. And can you guarantee? that the trucks that are carrying produced water will have a placard saying how many gallons of brine and where it's, you know, how many gallons that truck is carrying and where it's going because we know the DEP does not require that. Will, will Williams actually track that so that the public can know where the brine is going? We track that information uh, as far as it being public information. We submit reports to the DEP as well. Um, I'm not sure where this would relate to air quality permit, though, uh, where your question might be. Okay, ma'am, you want to go? This is going to be our last one. We're going to call a 15-minute break. And I didn't spell my name before. It's Dr. Reverend Ellen S-O-K-O-L-O-W. It's a bit of a spiritual question. Knowing what all of you know about what your industry produces and the damaging effects, my question is, how do you live with yourselves when you know that you're perpetrating genocide for generations? And I would like an answer from each person, please. Start at the end, work your way down, just go for it. If I shared that view, I wouldn't be in this business. That's right. He's giving you the answer, sir. Please don't interrupt. Let them answer the question. I believe people living longer now than they have any time in, in uh, history, as, we know, as far as we know. Our modern conveniences uh, give us a lot of luxury in lives. In our life today, as opposed to living several hundred years ago, with the toil that uh, people worked at hundreds of years ago is a very difficult lifestyle. We have a very easy lifestyle now due to our modern conveniences, which include the use of natural gas in our daily lives, how we drove here today, how we have electricity, um, hospitals. Um, I don't think, I don't believe your point of view. Excuse me, I'm getting away from the lightning strike. Okay, uh, hang on, sir, you're out of line. Don't speak. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. I believe we are providing a, uh, providing a resource that's uh, important for our everyday lives. Okay, sir, I'm going to ask you to leave if you continue to interrupt. You're being rude. You're interrupting. Go ahead, answer the question. I, I don't believe the EP has perpetrated genocide. Okay, well, Rebecca. No, no, he didn't. They didn't. Mark spoke. Oh, yeah, I didn't hear. Yeah, sorry. The question I is, don't, how I, do you live with yourself knowing what you know? We treat this like every other industry out there. Hospitals have boilers that emit. It's not, not the same. He's answering the question. Sorry, ma'am. He's, he's, he's not. The question. He's answering from the question. the question. He's answering your question. Answer the, he well, answered your question. Anything that combusts or burns natural gas or through engines, boilers, is going to have the same byproducts into the atmosphere. So you're equating all of okay, these is this a question? with is this a question? This is a question. And this is your last question. Are you com com equating all of the compressor stations with a hospital? No, I'm just Including the benefits. He's answering your question. I'm just comparing that there's emission sources throughout the whole region, throughout the whole state that we handle. NOx emissions from every industry you can think of, fall to organic compounds from every other industry. We have standards that we meet. Federal standards require one gram per brake horse per hour. We're, the state requires them to get down to 0.5 grams, lower than what the federal requirements are. So we're, we're doing our job. We're meeting them, making them be, do best available technology, and that's what the rules and regulations demand, and that's what we require.
Okay. And Rebecca, do you have a question here? No, that's, we're done with the question. No, no he, he didn't speak at all. He answered your question. Rebecca, you have a question? No, I And that's enough. You've answered your My question. question you sit down. Your, you, your question's got answered. answered. Would you tell go me, please? Rebecca, go ahead. Last question of the evening. As far as benzene goes and uh, the gas that we have here, it's my understanding, having spoken to uh, PhDs in geology, that the benzene is in the rock. So when you fracture the rock, the benzene comes up from the geological formations. It is there. So I, I'm very skeptical when you tell me that the gas that comes out of armor cells doesn't have any benzene, because that's not what I hear from PhD scientists. Um, having said that, um, I think that the VOC TPY tons per year for the permit for this compressor station all by itself, not aggregated, is 74.6 tons per year for VOCs. So if you're saying that that is not benzene, what is that? Toluene, ethylene, xylene, what other VOCs are there that come up to 76 tons per year? Yeah, I think uh, the actual number is 42. The 76 may be prior to the control that we have put in place. But again, the primary VOCs we're seeing is butane, propane, and formaldehyde. And the numbers you see are PTE, potential to emit. So they're much higher than we'll probably see actually at the site. Okay, thank you. That concludes the uh, public meeting part of the evening questions. We'll take a 15-minute break and then we'll uh, listen to your testimony. Thank you.